It's a big day for software because they just announced that they're supporting SQL databases as a backend data source. Now, this is huge. Your company might not have been able to use software in the past because you have all of these different homegrown databases and you're not using tools like Airtable or Google Sheets to store that data. Now you can easily build a UI, add your own pages, extend permissions, all while keeping that data intact inside of your own database. And the other group that might find this interesting are people who have used software and you're using Airtable or Google Sheets or SmartSuite, but maybe you're running into record limitation issues. That could be either because of pricing, you only are allowed a certain number of records, or on Google Sheets, you might have performance issues the more rows that you're adding to your Google Sheet. In either of these cases, software paired with SQL databases are going to be a great fit for you. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. If you haven't gotten started with software yet, you can use the link in the description for a free month off of software's pro plan. To get started, we can go to our data sources in software. We can connect a new data source. From here, you'll see several options. We're going to choose the SQL data source, which is currently in beta. And you've got several different options depending on your kind of database. In my case, I'm going with Postgres. Press continue. And then here's where you can plug in your own database settings. The name is just going to be what you want it to appear as inside of software. And then you can plug in your host, your port, your database, your user, and password. Once you filled that out, you can go ahead and press connect. And then for now, I'd recommend by getting started by clicking on this start from scratch. And you can choose which of any of these pages you want pre-built into your application, but you can create your own from scratch as well. So the use case that I'm working with today is that I'm a customer success team and I wanna be able to make it easy to be able to look at transactions for our customers, be able to issue refunds or extend free trials. So inside of my Postgres database, which I'm hosting on Supabase, I have information about the different transactions for my customers, as well as the different trials. And then let's say I have a marketing view of my customers that I have in Airtable or maybe something like Google Sheets. This is important because software effectively lets us join together data from different data sources. So back inside of software, what I've done is I've set it up so that I can look at the customer information and this data is coming from Airtable. I can see that in my data source and we can easily preview the application by clicking preview up at the top. And now as a logged in user, I can see information about my different customers. If I go ahead and click on one of those individual customers, now I can see some high level information about the customer. Again, this data is coming from Airtable. But now let's go ahead and build out our application with the data that we have coming from Postgres. So I'll go to my pages and here I've got a customer details page. I'm going to click this plus button to add a new block and software has lots of different dynamic blocks, all which tie to our data source. And I'm going to add a table and we're going to have this table display information about our trials. So first I'm going to choose my data source and we'll choose our Postgres. We'll choose the specific database. And then in some cases, you might have multiple schema available. In this case, auth is just some additional metadata. I'm going to choose public. And this is where we can choose from our available tables. Or you could add your own SQL query yourself. Click on new query. And this is where we could insert a query if we only want to take a subset of our data. In this case, I'm going to choose a table and we'll choose from trials. And now we can go into our content where we're going to choose which fields we want to display in this table. I'll delete this image. We'll put information about our plan, the status of our trial, the end date of our trial, and then we can clean this up a bit. I'll turn my search bar off and we'll remove categories in this case. And we'll go to our actions. We probably don't want to allow people to create a record because these will all be self-serve trials. We'll give this a title. And then let's go back into our source data here because we don't want all of the trial information to display here for this one individual customer details. Instead, what we wanna do is add a conditional filter and here we can say if the customer ID is, and then because we're on our current record, which reflects one of these customers, we'll choose current record, and then we can match it against the customer ID. So this effectively in the background is creating a join between these two tables of the customer and the trial. Now, if I preview my application, I can see we have this customer, Olivia, and her trial ended, and we can see information about the trial itself. She was on a premium plan and it ended on 531. Well, the really neat part is we can create our own custom actions inside of software as well. So let's go back to our actions tab and on an individual item here, like we have for trials, let's add an item button. In this case, we'll choose a one-click update and we're going to change the label here from update to extend trial. And then we could add any fields that we wanted to and update the status and we'll change this back to active and we could update the trial end date as well. So now your customer success team can actually update the data back in your database, add any permissions you want on top and be able to say, hey, let's extend this trial for this customer. Now let's add another block about our transactions. We'll press the plus button here. We could choose a list with horizontal cards, but I still think a table is going to work best for transaction data. 
We'll choose all the same source and database information again, except this time I'm going to choose transactions as my table. We're going to add that conditional logic again, and we'll want to make sure that the customer ID of our transaction actually matches our current record's customer ID. And we'll make sure to map over all of our fields like we did last time. Now, when we see a list of our customers, we can find one, click on them, and in this case, they don't have any active trial, but we can scroll down and we can see all of their available transactions. An action we might want to take is be able to refund our customers. To do that, we could do the same step and go to Actions, and we can add a new item button, but this one might make sense to use the Call API. We could call this Issue Refund, and then we could make a call to the service of our choice, be it something like Stripe or Make or Zapier. And that's really how easy it is to be able to connect multiple different data sources now with our SQL data and be able to take actions on the data itself. And just in case you were wondering about security, software makes it easy to be able to auto-sync contacts and what you can do is actually create your own user groups. So in this case, our users are stored in Airtable and we're saying if their type matches employee, let's go ahead and create a new employee user group. And this makes it really easy to be able to add as many different user groups as you want. Maybe you have different permissions for your vendors as you do your employees, which is different from your contractors. So then our permissions are really easy to apply because we could say we only want employees to be able to see our trials. So we click on our trials block, go over to visibility, and we can say only logged in users and not just all logged in users, but here's where we can say only employees have the ability to view this data. Hopefully this was helpful to see just how easy it is to get started with your own backend SQL data sources and connect them to software. If you have any questions about your own automation setup, don't hesitate to reach out to automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30 minute consultations.